I don't know how everyone else is feeling about it, but that final Manhunt cutscene with Kelso and Manny just seemed a little bit off to me. There isn't anything immediately obvious that I can point out. There were just a number of small questions I had after watching it. I'm going to replay it just so we have a reference point, but please feel free to skip this part. We need to talk. Oh, so you're talking to me again. Your buddy's in New York too busy to take your call. I finished decrypting Lau's insurance policy. Did she tell you why she did it? There's no way she can justify joining Black Tusk and assassinating the president. <sighs> when did everything get so complicated? The minute one asshole decided his Christmas present to the world was a global pandemic? Fucking Amherst. We've contained that threat, but there's a bigger one on the horizon. I know. Whatever the true sons have been fighting. What Faye was helping them fight. What she was trying to warn us about. She figured out what was really going on and she tried to warn us. But we didn't get the message. She tried to give us a clue back at Coney Island and an ally. Where's Schaefer? Same place he always is. What's his status? Stable, but in a coma. Been like this for weeks. And we're just tube feeding our enemy. He's not our enemy. Not anymore. Manny, he's the key. She left us a key, and if we want to stop what's coming, we need to wake him up. Manny Ortega was in Washington DC when the outbreak hit. During the first days before the total collapse of society, Manny's uncle was killed by two future members of the hyenas. After this point, Manny spent his time as a signalist in the JTF. He slowly rose in rank, mainly through attrition. His superiors, for one reason or another, left their positions, and he took their place. It is assumed that this is mainly due to death and desertions from the green poison. Or maybe they had received some sweet PC additions and have struggled to pull themselves away and get back to work. And on that note, a big thank you to NVIDIA and Galax. They recently sent me through a couple of much needed upgrades, a GeForce RTX 3050 and the Galax Vivence 1 gaming monitor. Out in my studio, the 3050 is a massive improvement over the old tired graphics card I've been running. It features ray tracing, DLSS, reflex and is exceptionally quiet, which is certainly going to help when it comes to voice recording. Back in the main office, I'm embarrassed to say that I've been a 60Hz pleb up until now, which apparently is just madness in this day and age. But I've always invested in pieces that would help me produce better quality videos, rather than what I can actually see myself. But after firing this bad boy up, I'm disappointed I didn't upgrade years ago. The Glax Gaming Monitor features a borderless 27-inch QHD IPS LED screen, 165Hz refresh rate, 1 millisecond response time, with advanced motion blur reduction and is G-Sync compatible. Basically, my eyes are very happy with me right now. A big thank you again to NVIDIA and Galax for sponsoring the video. Manny eventually became the division coordinator, playing a role similar to Fei Lau in New York City. Manny quickly wove himself into the fabric of the division in DC. He still has some family in California, but he is not able to contact them at present due to SHD network issues. The scene starts off with Manny having a bit of a tantrum because he's feeling neglected by Kelso due to a time in New York City. But in the timeline of events, Kelso actually hasn't been gone for very long. Plus, given the importance of the mission, it seems a bit of an overreaction. To be fair, he's always been a bit of a panicker and overreactor. If I can't get more pieces from the toy store, I'm not going to be able to finish my fucking map. All right, Manny. Jeez. But this seemed a lot more than usual. We've never seen him quite this tightly wound up. Is he really just that upset about being left behind, or is he angry with her because of some potentially questionable decisions he's had to make in her absence, and he blames her for putting him in this position? I'm predicting that one of these bad decisions is going to be the reason for some challenging times in a future season in DC. So whatever he has done, whoever he has spoken to, this scene is leading us towards Manny having a much larger part to play going forward.
At this point, after the countless times I've spoken about her, it might seem like I have some sort of personal vendetta against Kelso. But in all fairness to her, after watching that scene quite a number of times, she seems completely legitimate. Though it certainly wouldn't hurt for her to blink every once in a while, that intensity is terrifying. I also believe Faye when she said that Kelso was the best agent she had ever met. Although as a side note, that shit cuts deep man. I worked with you for months Faye, clearing out multiple hostile factions and cleaning up the streets of New York in Division 1. I'd like to think I was right up there. But that's fine, it certainly makes me feel less terrible about the fact that I one shot you at Camp White Oak. However I can't help but feeling that something still isn't quite right about Kelso. Firstly, I can't seem to forget about some of the earlier comms that were released about her. Don't we have enough agencies in this country? It's not so much an agency as a kind of stay-behind movement. A last line of defense, if you will. No hierarchy, and you'll answer directly to the president. And I'll get to do whatever I want. Whatever is needed, Ms. Kelso. Should you be activated, you'll be given extraordinary judicial powers to- Extraordinary judicial powers, huh? Alright, sign me up. I'll get the paperwork started. Selection is six weeks from now. Good luck. I've never scored anybody that low. Imagine how bad things would have to get for Director 51 to be activated. Every other option would have to fail. Every single one. Now you tell me Kelso isn't exactly the kind of person you'd want beside you in a scenario like that. She's pathologically insubordinate. That's an exaggeration. She's only insubordinate to people she doesn't respect. Are you listening to yourself? Well, it's kind of the point, isn't it, Tom? You don't call in the division if you've got a solid command structure in place. And if you have a failing command structure, the last thing you want is someone who's going to blindly carry out bad orders. I've already passed her. I'm just praying I don't regret it. You won't. Well, let's hope we never have to find out. And then there's her past. Even some of the more minor characters, or short-lived hostile faction leaders, have had some detail around the earlier days. With Kelso, we have very little to go on. We know that Ilani Kelso was born and raised in Kauai, in the state of Hawaii. When she was a child, she lived through Hurricane Aniki, and was left without power for several weeks. She joined the army out of high school, and would later become one of the first women to complete the US Army Ranger School where she demonstrated an aptitude for out-of-the-box solutions and foul play. This made her highly attractive to the CIA, and for some years, she performed covert operations as a paramilitary agent in the clandestine service. There she acquired a mixed reputation, as some of her superiors found her methods questionable, even though she always got the job done. She was eventually recruited by the division, and she worked as an instructor before taking on active agent status. But this is all very vague, other than an incident with a hurricane, we hear nothing about her earlier years, or her parents, or other family, or just generally any information of substance before the green poison was released. While seven people did die after Hurricane Aniki hit, none of them appear to relate to Kelso, with one woman dying of a heart attack, a man by flying debris, a woman who was crushed by a house collapsing, two Japanese nationals drowning after being capsized, with another being swept out to sea and a man who died in his home after it caught fire by a candle. All other characters have had some sort of traumatic experience that has been a part of why they joined and continue to fight to this day, regardless of what is thrown at them. It seems very strange that we have a character of Kelso's importance, and we really don't know that much about her. So after hearing all of that, I'm going to throw something pretty crazy out there. Stay with me. What if Kelso is a little closer to Natalia than we think? Natalia is another one we don't know much about. Originally I was querying whether maybe they were the same person altogether, but after a little research, they don't even have the same voice actor, and their mannerisms don't really align. But why did they pick an American voice actor to play Natalia? Her half-brother Felix and Kelso, this makes sense as they grew up in the US. But we are led to believe that Natalia grew up in Russia, why would she not have a Russian accent? Now I get it, accents are hard. A number of you may remember the couple of times I had attempted an American accent, and it was atrocious. Which is sad because my mother was born in the US. But I'm no voice actor. Perhaps there are deeper ties between Kelso and Natalia. Half siblings? Full? I don't know. But I've always been suspicious since reading through Felix Sokolov's information, where it is stated that Felix was the youngest child and only son of his late father. 
It seems like an interesting way to say that Felix was the youngest child of Alexei Sokolov. By saying only son, it sort of implies that there were multiple daughters. But we only know of one so far. Natalia. I am by no means fully invested in the speculation with Natalia and Kelso. There really is no decent evidence to support this. I'm simply pointing out some of the holes in the story so far that may not have been considered up until this point. Summing up, whether intended or not, I think something strange is happening regarding that conversation between Kelso and Manny. Aside from that, I'm pretty stoked that Barden Schaefer is still hanging in there. He would have to be one of my favourite, still living characters in the game right now. Imagine if later on he starts coordinating our missions for us. Here's some of the best lines in the game. Anyway, this has just been another tinfoil hat moment brought to you by, well, me. I really must thank my wife. After my accident, I really haven't had the motivation or confidence to get behind the keyboard or mic again. A lot of these ideas have really been spurred on by her. She isn't one to be in the spotlight as such, so you won't be seeing her jumping into any videos. But do me a solid, and thank her in the comments if you can. NGN may be my voice and obsession, but she is the true force behind the majority of these videos. Thank you once again for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!